Christmas, crafty friends. Today I'm bringing you the last of my makes for the Tim Holtz Sizzix 2021 holiday release. This is Eugene's Icebox. And for this make, I used Eugene, of course. I used the Christmas cookies. And again, as always, I haven't memorized all the names of these, so I will be putting them uh, just here below in the video and the retro oven. So these are the main dies that I used for this. Of course, I used a couple of alphas and uh, some little bit of greenery in here. But for the main makes, these are the three die. The main make, these are the three dies that I used. So I'll be talking a little bit about some of the mediums and some of those things that I used also to make this little piece. It does light up. So I did use some ideology Halloween lights in the, uh, they're, they're a purple color, um, but I thought that they kind of made it look like it was icy since this is his ice box and things are fresh chilled daily. I thought the purple would be a good color to use for this one. All right, so let's get started on how I made this. The first thing that I will talk about is the base. And the base is one of these retired framed panels from Tim Holtz Ideology. These are one of my favorite things. And so I have stocked up on these and I will be using them in the future. So if you can still get them, these are just wonderful. They are a framed panel. So there's a panel that is separate from the frame and then you attach the frame after you have either painted or covered the back panel. So for this one, what I did to cover it was I painted it with um, a white, uh, both the, the panel and the frame with white picket fence distress paint. Then I painted over, you can, if you look at it carefully, you can see that it's kind of shiny and crackly. And so uh, first I went over it with just regular distress opaque crackle paste. So you can see that there, it's not very smooth in parts. And so I, with my finger, I just ran all the way over with distress opaque crackle texture paste and I let that dry. It's not none of the holly, ho, holiday stuff. It is just the regular everyday line of crackle paste. Let that dry. Then I went over it with additional crackle with the holiday icicle crackle paste to add a shininess and additional cracking in there where the other crackle paste maybe didn't crackle. So I'm trying to get it so you can see the two different crackles. So you can see the white crackle underneath, but then if you look on top, you can kind of see an iridescent and those very fine little crackles in there. So that's the icicle on top of the crackle paste. This is double crackle. All right. And then once that was all done, I brushed over it with the Snow Flurries Mica Stain. And that is what kind of turned it the, the blue in the cracks. I let it soak into the cracks and then I wiped off the excess so that it just highlights all the little details of the frame and all the little icy cracks, but it didn't completely color it. All right, now let's talk about the panel. So the panel was painted white and I left it white. Then I went over the whole thing with, I, I already used a whole set of these, with icicle crackle paste. I used the new cobblestone 3D embossing folder because I kind of thought that it could look like blocks of ice, you know, or chunks of ice. So I ran through just, this is just a, like an overhead that you would put through a laser printer or an inkjet printer. So I ran the acetate through four times just because it's thin and I really wanted it to, you know, get the texture in there. And so once I did that, I covered the entire panel with some of the icicle texture paste and I added a couple of sprays of the snow flurries just lightly so that it would color it. Then I took the acetate and I pressed it in two pieces and you can't see it, but there is a little line underneath the oven where the two pieces came together 
And so I put them on, squished them into the paste, and then I put something heavy on it and let it sit and dry overnight. So let's see if you can see in there and see, you can actually kind of see where it raised up there a little bit, but that doesn't bother me. But you can kind of see the crackling underneath and it's clear. And so most of it's kind of covered up. So it may be, you know, just a little too, I don't know, too much work for, for some people for a background, but I, I was just experimenting, kind of playing around, and I thought it was kind of a fun thing to do. So I can see in some places that there is some cracking underneath the cobblestone, but it just gave it kind of a fun textured background, and I thought that was, that was worth it for me. All right, so that's how I did that background. And then once the panels were dry and they were in place, I went ahead and attached the frame to it. And then I needed the edge of this frame. The lip is not enough to really do anything 3D. And I knew I wanted this to light up. So I was going to have to have room for those lights to be behind the, the, the oven. So I had to make a shelf. And to do that, I added the widest of the um, et cetera trims and the scalloped ones. All right, so these are the scalloped trims and you get five sets of three, thin ones and thin ones and thick ones. All right, you're gonna have to trim them. They do trim easily just with your template scissors. You can just kind of cut through to make sure that it fits within here. And then I just attached it to the lip so that my little bits had some place to stay. Then I also needed some shelves. And so I used one of the thinner ones for the shelf. And you can stick them on by just putting a little bit of glue right along the, the flat edge and then holding it in place until it dries and it will uh, stay. Now for this one, I actually had the lip part of the frame and then I stuck it along the back and uh, it, it stayed nicely, you know, once it dried. So you want to give those time to dry once they get there. And so while those are drying, you can be working on some of the other things. Now, the Eugene Colorized Dye has a video on the Sizzix website uh, and YouTube channel that shows how to put him together. So I'm not really going to go into detail for how to do that because that's simple enough. Just know that his all the things that are colored and the presents that come with him are all colored with stress stains and then additionally given a little spritz with the different mica stains. Uh, the jack-o'-lantern, flickering candle, tree lot, snow flurries, and winter berry are the colors that I used on this mink. For the cookies, let's talk about these little ones that come with the oven because we're going to talk about the oven next. So for those, those are just cardstock and then I colored them with snow flurries and mica stain for the the little and it just takes a little piece of paper it's not much because they're very tiny I don't know if I can show you on here so see these are how big they are they're very tiny and so all you have to do they come on a strip so you just need to color a little piece of white distressed heavy stock with the snow flurries and then I covered it I don't know if you can see in there but I covered that before I cut them, I covered them. They're all crackly with, again, my icicle crackle paste. And that gave them that little shiny mica iridescence and it also crackled them so that they would look icy. I made three bags and the bags are easy to make once you have the cookies cut. So I just have some, you know, packaging or bags laying around. And all I did, I cut and just be generous, you know, because you can always trim, which is what I did. Uh, so then I would take, and so that was, you know, kind of a, that these, there are two corners, all right? And then one in the middle that doesn't have a corner and that's all right. So I would put the cookies in and then I put, I don't know if you can see at the bottom, it was like they were sugared. 
So I put in a little tiny bit of just distress glitter in the bottom, you know, kind of like how the sprinkles or whatever always end up in the bottom of the bag a little bit. So that's what um, I put in the bottom of each bag. So a little bit of sprinkles, a few cookies, and then I took and would put a little tiny bit of like a glue dot or something on this and get it to stick to the back because no one's going to see the back. So no one will see it. The cookie's covered up. I got that open end to stick to the back and then I just scrunched the top up like that. And I tied it with a little bit of some tinsel. This is an old ideology tinsel that Tim used to have, but I know that you can probably find it or you could use a little baker's twine or anything that you have on hand, all right? And so I just made three of those. And the same thing if you are using the one with the two sides, uh, I went ahead and I stuck both sides back first on those. And then, and I had to make several before I was happy with the three that I got, just because, you know, when you're trying to figure something out, sometimes it takes practice and that's okay. All right, so once I got the sides tucked back, I went ahead and opened it from the top. I put some of my glitter in, stuck my cookies in, and then crinkled it up together again. And there I had another little bag of ice cookies. All right, that's how I did those. Now for the bigger cookies, I have two things going on here. I cut them out of a little bit of heavier material. Now you could cut them out of just plain acetate or if you have a thicker acetate. Sometimes I have found at a hobby store that you can buy single pieces of acetate that are a little bit thicker and that might be um, a good option. I happened to have quite a few sheets of this. This is retired now, but you might have some in your stash. I don't have the packaging for it, but this is that frosted film that I, uh, Tim used to sell through Ideology. And this makes great windows on your little buildings. I have it like here. Um, I put it in on my little elf house because it diffuses the light. So I put it on my doors. It also gives a little more strength to the houses. So I put it through in, it's behind all of my windows, the frosted film. I really like this. So I use this behind my oven door. And I also use this to cut out the cookies because it has, it's pretty substantial. And so I thought, well, that might give it a little bit of strength. Um, but again, you know, use what you have. If you have acetate, use acetate. Um, maybe you have plastic film from um, the packaging, uh, you know, from Tim Holtz packaging, like, you know, like the Bobbles packaging or something, and maybe you can cut some out of that too, because that has some really good strength. All right, so when you cut the cookies out, this is, they come in two parts, the, the cookies and the icing. So for example, here's the candy cane. So you would cut this out of your clear acetate or your film or whatever you have. And then this part, the frosting part, I cut out of like a white glitter paper. I use the Sizzix Opulent cardstock in glitter. Uh, the white Christmas from the white, the white from the Christmas pack. And then I attached it with uh, you can use glossy accents or you could use collage medium. So I attached it. And then once it was attached, I went ahead and put over it a nice thick layer of, again, the crackle texture paste so that they would crack. And these made, it made, I did it really thickly. And so it made really big cracks, but, um, you can kind of see. And actually, I'm looking at this now and I'm remembering I didn't use the glitter card stock uh, for the frosting. I used the pearl, the white pearl um, from the Christmas package. So that's what I used for that. And then once it dries and it sticks on there, put your layer of icicle, let it dry. And then it looks like around the edge, I went around the edge with my glossy accents just around the edge of each cookie, because if you look carefully, you're gonna be able to see that it's kind of sparkly. And that's because when I went around the edge with my glossy accents, I then dusted it with glitter 
and that left it shiny and icy and glittery right on the edge of each of those cookies. Okay. So there's quite a lot going on there. And then also, if you look, you can see that in the cracks, it's got that blue again. And so again, I went over it with the snow flurries. I rubbed that in there so that it would go into the cracks. And then I wiped off the excess, leaving just that little tiny hint of blue in the cracks to make it icy. All right, so I did three cookies. And then I did three packages of cookies. And then the three presents that I was going to put on each of the shelves so that if you came in, you know, this is his, um, you know, little display, his cookie display for sale. To kind of fill in some of the blanks, I cut some greenery out of the same pearlescent cardstock. And then I have a ton because these were some of my favorite releases from past ideology. Those beaded um, little things that uh, I just, I don't know, I, they're just my favorite and you can color them with alcohol inks. I don't know if you have any of these, but I just left them white and just stuck them here and there. And then also to tie in with the little bit of tinsel, I threw in a little tiny bit of tinsel over here by him as well, just so that it, it all tied in. And then once all that was done, I went ahead and added a little bit more of the snowfall grit paste just to give it an icy feel on the edges of those shelves and down here on this shelf with him. I didn't put any on Eugene. And then now, oh, there's a whole bunch of ice uh, snowfall on the sign. You can see tons of snowfall on that sign. And I used the opulent glitter for I cut out the words icebox twice, once in white opulent glitter cardstock, and then in the same metallic as what I'm going to talk about right now with the um, retro oven. So, okay, let's talk about the retro oven. I did have a request to talk about how to put this together, so I'm going to have to make a separate video for that that I will put in here. Uh, when I'm done with my walkthrough, uh, as far as, you know, how I put it together. But let me just say that usually what I do, because all I have when I get these is a picture like this that I print out on my computer. And then I just follow this picture to the best of my ability by looking at the dies and then figuring it out. And I don't usually make my first one on the first try, I usually cut out practice card stock so that I can see how everything layers. And then when I'm ready to go, I go ahead and cut everything out the way I want it to go. All right, so we'll talk about that in a minute, but let's talk about what I used to make this and a couple of the techniques, and then we'll get into assembly, all right? So for my retro oven, I used a sheet from each of these metallic Car, uh, craft stocks from Tim Holtz Ideology, the metallic jewels, and the metallic confections. So if you look closely, you can see I have two colors of kind of blue aqua, and there's a lighter one that is on the front of the stove. It is the two detail lines down here, uh, the top of the range, the back of the temperature gauge, and then the very top, there's a little detail piece on the top. So many of the pieces that I cut out were right here, right here, and right there. Um, those are just kind of detail pieces. All right. Then uh, for the main body, you can see, and for the letters up here, I used a piece from the jewels set. So that is in the back here. It's this darker kind of looks kind of dodger bluish to me and then the aqua one is in the confections and if you go through you can see it's right there and it's kind of that lighter aqua color okay so those are the two that i used then for the black pieces on here i used the uh, onyx metallic cardstock comes like this and then the silver is from the one that looks like this but it's silver and gold so I used all of those bits and pieces to make my 
because I want it to be shiny and I wanted it to be, you know, icy. Okay. So if you look carefully, you can see I added the black handle behind the temperature, the little gauge on the temperature gauge, and then the, um, the burners. Okay. And the back of the, uh, knobs. The silver is the front of the temperature, the handles, and then that, um, I guess, front panel that the, the knobs are on. Okay, so those were my colors I used. And as you can see, I thought this was interesting and I just left it uh, because I, I, just, I thought it was cool and I, I wasn't too worried about it, but I know that um, it might bother some people. So I did not put anything on my metallic craft stock. I just smeared some icicle crackle paste all over the oven once it was put together. So don't do it before, do it after it's all put together. I smeared it over there and I let it crack. And you can see it made some big cracks and you can see that it flaked off in places. And I know that that really bothers people sometimes. And if, if you're one of those people, you might want to maybe put a layer of collage medium on before you do that. Um, if it bothers you, it, I think it's cool. And I like that it flaked off so it didn't bother me. Then just around the inside where things would be freezing, you can see that. And along the outside and on the top, I put some of the snowfall. Again, with my finger, just a little bit and you just pounce it. You just want the tiniest bit. It's gonna dry and it's gonna be really cool, okay? So that's mostly how I made that. Now the, the retro, TV, or retro TV die, was made with these shaker domes in mind, these rectangle shaper, shaker domes. All right, so in fact, you can see the retro TV there. But this was also made with those in mind. Again, with either one, you don't have to use this shaker dome. It was just made to fit them if that was something you wanted to do. And I kind of thought it would be fun to do those Halloween bubbles, like the snowballs that I showed in my snow technique video. So that's exactly how these are done. I took the bubbles, I put the glossy accents on my finger, I rolled them around in the glossy accents, I stuck them in my glitter, and then I rolled them around, and you end up with an icy ball um, that looks pretty cool. It's fairly translucent, and so that's what I put on there because I wanted the light to really shine through. On the very back, that's where I have some more of this film. If you don't have any of that film, but you still want it diffused, you could use um, maybe some thick or two pieces of vellum if you want it on the back or something like that. And then I had, what I put was I put up here and down at the bottom I put some little like uh, pieces of chipboard or uh, maybe like wooden wooden stir sticks, and I wrapped my lights around there, and then I went up and I wrapped the lights around there so that when you turn it on, you get lights from below and lights from above. All right, but they're not directly behind the snowballs. I just wanted it to be up for, up here and back here, but I didn't want you to see the lights, just the glow of the lights. So that's really important. Now, I know this bothers some people, but you are gonna probably get some glow out the side. There's just really nothing you can do about it. Um, I have layers of foam tape behind here to hold it up. And then I had some, can you see that? I had some glittery um, like washi tape. It was thin and it was from one of Tim's releases from uh, several years ago. And so I just went ahead and covered up the foam tape with that glittery washi tape so that you couldn't see it. But you do have some glow that comes out the sides. And again, that doesn't really bother me. I'm not really sure how to help you if it does bother you unless you can completely seal it uh, with the foam tape when you stick it down. That's my only suggestion. You do, of course, have to drill a hole in the back 
uh, and attach your lights on the back. And then this is actually another one of Tim's releases, um, the snowflakes die. Uh, and I have the background paper is again, the snow flurries on white heavy stock. These are fun snowflakes and you know, look how easy you can make a background out of them um, just by sticking them on. And these are just white distressed heavy stock. They're nothing special, but you know, you could have used, if you thought somebody was gonna see the background, you could use a special pearl or glitter or something like that on those. All right. Okay. So that's how I made the ice balls that are being fresh chilled to be sold and how I got the lights in there. All right, so now we've come to the time where I need to show you how I put together the retro oven in case that was one of your questions. Before I begin the assembly portion of this, I wanna talk through the dies with you because I think it's important to see the dies laid out so that you know what you're working with. And also because I think this part will help dispel some nerves that you may have when you look at colorize. It's really not as difficult as I think sometimes we make it out to be in our minds. So this right, is your so first die that you're gonna cut. And you're gonna cut this out of, depending on how you're gonna use it, either one layer or maybe a couple of layers. For me, because I was going to have it standing out from my background and I was using it uh, with a lot of foam behind it and things like that, I really wanted this to be fairly sturdy. So you can see that it's fairly sturdy. I used some uh, Distress Heavy Stock in white that I cut out and then I cut the front out in that blue metallic, the dark blue metallic. So you would pick the color that you want and the substrate that you want. The type of paper is a substrate. So you pick the type of paper you want, cut out your base. It is going to cut, if you look at it, it has the cut lines on the outside and the cut line in the center area where you can either put just plain acetate or you can put the dome if you want it later on. All right, so once you have your base cut, the great thing about this, if you look, is that all of these are just etching lines. They are not gonna cut anything. This is what's gonna allow you to put it together without a lot of pain, okay? Because once you cut your base, all of these lines will be indentions, and all you have to do is follow the picture and the indentions and you're good to go. Let's look at what we have on here. So our oven has some detail pieces, like this piece on the top of the range. It's got a little line back here along the bottom of the top in the back. Then it's got the top part where the burners are, the burners. It's got the temperature gauge. We've got the handle. These lines here, are just these deeper etchings, okay? So these etchings here that show the door, they're just a little bit deeper. And you may have noticed some people have actually started to cut along those and open this so that the door opens. So that's another option for you if you would like. And then you have these two lines for detail down here. Okay, so let's look for the one with the, the detail like this. And if you look over here, you're gonna see that we have one with a line down here. And then we have two lines that are kind of rounded on the end. See, they're rounded. This one's kind of squared on the end. We've got that arched piece. We've got the handle. And then we've got these two rectangles. And if you look at the picture, you can see where all of these go. So you can see that's the one at the top, Here's the handle. These two with the rounded ends are right down here. The one with the square ends is the one at the bottom up here that's behind the base where the rain of the top of the range. And then these two little details are going to go right here on each side of the knob face. There's this piece right here. Well, 
that's the piece that goes on top of the range. All right, so you'll cut that and you're gonna put it right on top there. And then this piece right here is going to go right over it. We want the face here. Well, that's this one. And you can see it has those etchings in it. So it's going to show you exactly where your knobs go. And it even has a place right there for those little end pieces that are on this one, okay? All right, now, because the etchings are here, that tells you what goes next. So you wanna follow the etching lines because that's gonna tell you. If you look on here, you can see that there are not knobs etched. So you know, you don't wanna put the knobs right on there. You want to put this piece on there. See how it fits right on there? Then your knobs, and you can see they have the knobs and the little handles, the little turners on those knobs. Okay. And then last but not least, you have, this is the temperature gauge, okay? And you can see that it has etching lines in it. This only has the etched lines for the outline of this. So once you cut this out and put it on, it has more etching lines. And that's because you have this piece that's going to go on there. And you can cut this in a couple of different uh, passes. So this is the first piece that's gonna go down. And for me, I cut that piece out of the light blue because that's what's gonna show through the window, okay? So I cut this one out of the light blue and then I cut this one out of the silver. And the way you can tell which one is the base piece is because see, this is a lighter etching die. This is the deeper cutting window, okay? So you know this one's gonna have the window in it. It's gonna be on the top showing. So that's the one I cut out of silver. And then I actually wanted to cut this out of a different color. So I cut it out of black. Right. Here are the burners. Now there is no nothing etched on here. So you can kind of put the burners where you want them, okay? All right, my friend, so I have some pieces cut and I thought I would just show you that it takes a couple of passes to get all the pieces that you need. And you can use smaller pieces. So, you know, I could have probably cut um, the little, this little thing out of just, you know, a little corner or whatever. But I just wanted to show you if I just put everything down on, you know, a piece, this is how big the piece is if I wanted to get all of, um, uh, the black pieces out. Now, so here's your base, the one you cut from here. You can very clearly see all of the etchings so that you know exactly where to place everything, just like I was telling you, okay? So I only cut out the one craft stock, so it's not very heavy, but let's go ahead and start assembling. Okay, so it, does, it doesn't matter, again, where I'm gonna start, but you know, I have this one, it's loose, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick that right there. Now, I'm not gonna glue it down. Um, I'm just gonna kinda lay them on there, but I would adhere them. You can either, when you cut these out, you can either put um, them through a Xyron uh, before you cut them so that they are have sticker backing on the back, or you can use the Sizzix sticky sheets, which those are something that I often use as well. You could use glossy accents if you want, or you could use uh, Distress Collage Medium, okay? Which is, you know, something that I might use real quick here. So if I put a little Collage Medium on there, and you just need a little bit, then stick it down. And usually, if I do that, I go like this. And I'm usually in here crafting and I am watching, you know, my favorite TV shows or whatever it is. And I give a little time to sit and then I go ahead and I move on. All right. So the next one that I might want to put would be maybe the top area. And you can see, if you look at the base, got a little collage medium on there. Um, you can see that it has that little place for the detail. And I thought, you know what, I might make a spring one that would have maybe some Easter cookies in it or something. Okay, so this would go on top. And again, it's, there's no, it doesn't matter if you do this last, um, it's fine. 
All right, then we had that line at the back. All right, so that was at the bottom here. So we're, I'm just gonna get all the pieces out of here. And that one was the one, so if you get them mixed up and you're like, oh my goodness, look at all these, I don't know which one it is, it's okay. If you look at the ends, remember one of them, this one is round-ended, this one is round-ended. So if you remember the round ones that have round at the end, they go down here, right over, and they fit right over that spot. Okay, so there we go, we've got those on there. So that leaves us with the piece that has the square ends. That's gonna go right here where you see the lines with the square ends. Put that on there. All right, now the top of my range. I could have done those two in two different colors if I wanted, but I just decided to do them in the same color. And you can see that this, the way that it is lo longer at the front, and it angles back. If you look on the on here, you can see that the lines angle back. So I'm going to put that. That's the top of the range. Okay. Now I haven't glued anything down, but there you go. I've got my details on there already. Now I needed the also, remember I'm not using this handle. So I'm going to get that out of there. And then I need to do my temperature gauge. So remember, I have this one, and then I'm going to put one over it. And you have two. Remember, one cuts out the window, and then one is the color behind the window. I don't want them to be the same. You could have them the same. I don't want them to be the same. So I want mine to be this green color. So I'm going to stick that on there. Just kind of centering it. And I wanted the front of it with the window to be silver. So see, I ran this same die through three times. So I have a couple of those. So if I was making, remember, a couple of ranges, I might, you know, I could put this, see, behind there for a different oven. But... I'm not doing that. Here's my silver one. I'm going to put it over the green one. And then I need the little gauge. Now I have a silver one and I have a green one because remember I ran this through three times because I have three different colors going on. The third time I ran it through was over here on the black. Okay. So I have these left over, but I also have right over here my little gauge. And see if I can get it to just drop in there since this stuff's not glued down. There you go. All right, so I have my little gauge on there. All right, now we need to have some knobs and we need a handle. So remember, I wanted my handle to be black, so I cut it out of the black. And I'm going to stick it on there right where those indentions are. Very simple. You can see where the indentions are for the stove front. I wanted that silver, so I cut it out of silver. And then you can see very clearly there are my indentions for where I put the ends and where I put the knobs. There goes the front. I'm going to pick these up because I want the green ones. And I'll put one there. And the other one is going to go here. Okay. Now what's next? I can put on my burners, which were black. So I cut those out of my black cardstock. Let's get those out. I think I have everything else out of this that I need. So I'm going to move this to the side. I'm going to pick up a burner. And that goes up here. This one goes on the other side. I want to put my knobs on. So let's get the knobs on. And I wanted the back to be black. So I would glue that on and then I would come over here. I cut them out of silver. Okay, because this is the die to cut both the knobs and the little turners. So I would pick that up. 
and I would adhere it there. And then you would do that with each one of them, okay? Just put the knobs on all of them. It clearly shows you where to put them. And then if you look, even on the knobs, they have that little area where it shows you where you're gonna put the front of the knob, okay? So you're gonna do that five times. And when you're done, if you have adhered it as you went along, like I could have, you would have your range all put together. And it's really that simple. This is one of the easier colorized dies, so I really encourage you to give it a try. And I think you'll realize once you get started that it really isn't as intimidating as it may seem just looking at the picture. I all right, my friends, that's going to about do it for Eugene's Icebox. If you have any questions for me about this, as always, I encourage you to go to my blog and click the contact uh, section at uh, in the right-hand column. You can contact me that way through email, and I will be glad to do my best to try and answer any questions that I may have missed um, or maybe that I wasn't clear about. Thank you so much. And the next blog post is going to be from a different brand of my holiday makes. And I'll save which one until the next video. So I will see you then, my friends. Have a crafty day.